Hi there, welcome to Nippy Invest. On to one of my favorite types of videos. In fact, I'm gonna call this my favorite type of videos, not one of my favorite. These videos where I look at charts are my favorite types of video. And I cannot believe I'm saying that. If uh, myself 10 years ago heard me say that, he would be in shock right now because the way I invest or speculate or trade has changed quite a bit over the past 10 years when I first started investing. And I think it's really important to be able to adapt your investing strategies so your investing strategies suit your portfolio. And I'm finding that technical analysis, reading charts, really fits into my portfolio more than the traditional type of investing, the Warren Buffett, Charlie Munger type of investing where you find companies that are good value and you buy them when they're cheap and you hold them for as long as possible. That doesn't really, that style of investing doesn't really suit me. Even though it has been successful, it doesn't really suit me. And I just love looking at charts. I love looking at signals. And I think the reason, or one of the reasons I love looking at signals, looking at charts, looking at technical analysis is because it's real. It's, you can't argue, or I suppose you can debate about it, but you can't argue whether or not a company is in, is in an uptrend or a downtrend. It's plainly obvious. When it comes to value investing, looking at a company and the potential future of that company, there's a lot of different factors you have to take into account and you can be completely wrong, but you can't be wrong when a company is in an uptrend. So I do like that certainty when it comes to technical analysis, even though uh, different uh, technical analysis will look at a chart and actually see different things. There is that aspect to looking at charts, but there are some things within technical analysis that are absolute, you can't argue against it. So uh, if you don't believe in looking at charts or technical analysis, the thing I do implore you is just be open-minded because there is a possibility that uh, starting to learn about technical analysis could improve your performance in investing over the long term. So maybe you can learn something by watching this video. That is one of my hopes. Um, if you don't learn anything, um, I just like doing these sort of videos, so there's that as well. So in this video, I'm going to look at five companies. Not really chosen at random, I did pick these companies for particular reasons. And then I'm going to discuss whether these companies are buy, hold or sell, looking at the weekly and daily chart. Sometimes they could be maybe a buy on the daily chart, and maybe a sell on the weekly chart. I'm not sure if that's going to happen, or there could be a hold on the daily chart and then a buy on the weekly chart. So let's get stuck into it. But before we look at the five companies, I'm gonna talk about one of the companies that I've used this strategy and has been very successful. And the reason I'm gonna show you this company was it was the second trade I made when I started tracking the performance of using this type of strategy. And it's the type of company that I would never have bought into um, in my old investing strategy, sort of looking for that company that's good value that I wanna hold for the long term. And that company is South32. My old investing self, before I started learning about technical analysis, probably would be horrified that it would even be thinking about buying into South32. This is a mining company. It's a price taker, not a price maker. You just don't buy companies that are price takers. You only buy those companies that are price makers. And that's very important when you do have high inflation. You wanna buy those sort of companies that uh, have pricing power and mining companies tend not to have pricing power. However, they do follow the price of the commodity, and during these sort of times, commodity prices are going on a roar, and South32 is definitely benefiting from that. So if we go back to the middle of 2020, share price of South32 was around $2, and there was a period of time here when the share price was going sideways. Now, I did make one mistake when it came to South32. I thought there was a breakout in the share price, uh, around about early August, maybe late July, share price was around $2.20, but I was a little bit too impatient. Instead of buying on the breakout, I bought at the top of a trading range, and then the share price went sideways for about four months, four months. and then the breakout actually happened in the middle of November, uh, and that's when we saw the share price just go on a tear over the next year. In fact, share price increased from about $2.20 all the way to a high of $3.10, which was reached in May of the following year. There was also a possibility I might have sold out 
in August of last year. It looks like the trend wanted to stop. Share price was going sideways again, consolidating. And then we saw another breakout towards the end of August. That breakout happened around about $3 to $3.10. And I'm really glad I didn't sell out there because share price has continued to go up. A well-defined uptrend right now. And the share price at the end of trading on the 3rd of March was $5.12. So I bought in around about $2.10, $2.20. And definitely happy with this trade because I have doubled my money in South 32. I never thought I would ever say that about five or 10 years ago, maybe because South 32 hasn't been around that long. But anyway, I never thought I'd buy into a mining company. These are not the sort of companies I would ever have bought in. That's the other thing I like about technical analysis. You don't rule out companies. You don't rule out sectors. You are willing to buy any company that shows you or gives you a signal. One of the features or one of the ways you can really use technical analysis is to buy companies you want to hold for the long term and buy them at a really good price. And one of those companies I really want to buy into, Technology One, T-E, T-N-E is the code. This company seems to be highly valued all the time, but uh, we do see opportunities buy on the rare occasion. And in this particular slide, this is the daily chart. So typically I'll start off with the weekly chart and then go to, to the daily. But here with Technology One, I'm starting at the daily chart. And the share price really hasn't shown any significant uptrend. So I, because I'm looking to buy into companies for the longer term, I'm really looking at the 50 and 100 day moving average or the weekly average when we look at the weekly chart. And if you do look at these moving averages, there's no clear buy signal or no clear uptrend for the majority of this time period, which is from August 2000 or September 2020 all the way to current period. But a definite uptrend, and I've shown that uptrend by that uh, dashed line, that dashed black line, which he did hit two of the down points, uh, which was in February 2020, and then again in uh, early 2021. And recently, it got very close to that uptrend, uh, only missed it by about 50 cents or so. And if the share price did get to that uptrend, which is about $9.20 right now, I would have taken a position in this company. Now to the weekly chart for technology one. And if I was thinking of buying into a company for the long term, I probably would focus on the weekly chart just to see if the share price is in this long term uptrend. And for technology one, the share price is in a long term uptrend and it has been since about June of 2018. So almost four years of uptrend in the share price. And the way I determine the uptrend is just looking at these two moving averages. If the 50 week moving average is above the 100 week moving average and remains above it, the share price is in an uptrend. And we saw the 50 week moving average move above the 100 week moving average back in mid to late 2018. And every single time we've seen share price dip towards this dashed line, which is the support line or the uptrend line, that is a time to take, you can take a low risk position in this company. It's done it almost three, almost four times in the past. The other really good support level for this company is the 100 week moving average. It's hit that four times and every single time it hits or just goes below the 100 week moving average, we see the share price start to take off again. And it did that only one week ago and has just taken off again. So would I consider technology one to be a buy, hold or sell right now? Well, I think the most opportune uh, time to take a position in this company was about a week ago. When the share price was about $9.75. Current share price is $10.64. But that would be the thing I'll be waiting for in the future with this company is any weakness in the share price, particularly if it hits any support levels, that would be the time to take a position in technology one for the long term anyway. Now onto a company that I decided to include in this video because they did release a profit upgrade during the week, that is Sigma Healthcare. And this particular week, just after the end of reporting season, we don't see many significant profit upgrades or downgrades or anything like that. So to get one profit upgrade was really interesting for me. And that's the only reason I've included Sigma Healthcare in this video. And this is the weekly chart. So now we're gonna start with the weekly charts. Um, maybe for the rest of the companies. And to be honest with you, nothing really exciting when it comes to Sigma Healthcare over the past six years. Share price has been higher 
as one dollar and fifty cents. But uh, over the past three, actually four years now, since the middle of 2018, share price has done absolutely nothing. But there is a really good support level right on 44 cents. And every time the share price reaches 44 cents, which has happened five times over the past four years, that would be a low risk buy for this company. And I don't think at this point in time, uh, this is the same sort of company as uh, Technology One, that I do see significant upside in the future in that company. I don't see the same with Sigma Healthcare. This would more, like, more than likely be uh, a short to medium term uh, play the trend. So if there's any uh, uptrend in the share price, play the positive sentiment in the company. So right now, we did see the share price reach that uh, that support level at 44 cents a few weeks ago, hit it again a few weeks later, and we have seen share price take off a little bit um, past that support level. So let's have a look at the daily chart, and you'll be able to see the share price hit that support level twice in the past month and a bit. As we turn our attention to Sigma Healthcare's daily chart, and this should really emphasize that technical analysis does work because that support level, which wasn't 44 cents, it's more like 43 cents, was hit twice in the last three months, in December and then again in January, and both times the share price hit that support level, the share price took off, there was buying. And then those distractors or detractors against a technical, technical analysis will say, well, it's just a self-fulfilling prophecy. Yeah, that's the whole point. People see the share price get to a support level and then start buying. They might do it subconsciously, but it works because it's all about psychology. Psychology is really important, and if you ignore the power of psychology when it comes to investing, you won't be as good as an investor as you could be if you take it into consideration. That's my own belief, and I think through technical analysis, and if you work hard to understand technical analysis, you'll understand that as well. Uh, so anyway, on to the chart for Sigma Healthcare. Now, share price has been in a downtrend since about September, October last year, a short-term downtrend. Share price has fallen from about 64 cents to that low at the support level at 43 cents. And it has share price has rebounded off that. But again, share price is still in a downtrend. I'd like to see um, maybe some good financial news that profit upgrade did not work. And the reason that profit upgrade did not work, I think the market was expecting it because it was all about those RAT tests and this company benefited from that. So I think the market expected that profit upgrade and that's why we didn't see a share price take off. In fact, share price fell on the day they released that profit upgrade. You don't usually see that. Now to a company I've really never looked at before, James Hardy. And this is one of the companies that popped out when I do my weekly charts or weekly look at charts so every weekend i have a look at charts uh, so there's 2000 over 2000 companies on the asx so i can't go through every chart but i will have a look at a large amount of charts on the weekend i'm trying to see uh, any sort of signal uh, any sort of support level that a company i do like has hit and that could be an opportunity to, for me to buy into a company particularly if i do like the long-term future so that's how technical analysis can work for me if I do like a company, I'm just looking for a good buy in price or point. So let's move on to James Hardy. I've never looked at this company before, and when I looked at their weekly chart, probably one of the first times I've looked at the weekly chart for this company, uh, the share price has done wonderful things over the past 10 years, increasing from about $4 to current share price of $44. Is that right? Yeah, increasing not quite $4, about $6, to a high of $58. What an absolute wealth winner for shareholders have held on to this company during that time period. And the majority of this 10 year period, James Hardy share price has been in an uptrend. There was a period of time between about 2018, 2020, particularly um, around the time of the COVID-19 financial panic when the share price was not in an uptrend. But outside of that period, that short period, share price of this company just keeps on going up. And the share price has really accelerated uh, after the COVID-19 financial panic. In fact, it increased from $14 at the low to that high of $58. But we have seen share price uh, pull back over the past few months. In fact, the share price has pulled back from that $58 to a $44. And it's moved into between the two moving averages. And sometimes you will see that at, that is a good support level uh, in between the two moving averages. The 100-week moving average could be a support level. And through the history, particularly if you go back 
between 2012 and 2018 or 2017, when the share price of James Hardy moved in between those two moving averages, that was the time to buy. On a couple of occasions, the share price fell briefly below the 100 week moving average, and that was the absolute perfect time to take a position in this company, and we're right near that at this particular point in time with this company. One of the reasons I wanted to include James Hardy is because you get a sort of a different reading uh, when you compare the weekly chart to the daily chart. So on the weekly chart, I'm actually getting a potential buy signal because the share price is in a good support level between those two moving averages. When we pay attention to the daily chart here, the share price of James Hardy moved into uptrend uh, in the middle of 2020 when the share price was around $25 and continued to move up from that $25 to $58. So you would have doubled your money if you took a position in this company when it moved in the uptrend uh, almost two years ago. But the uptrend came to an end just a few months ago, towards the end of uh, 2021 or even the start of 2022. The share price uh, has moved into a downtrend that has been confirmed because we have seen a crossover in those moving averages and share price has fallen from 58 to 44. We did see a little bit of a dead cat bounce. Share price went from $44 back up to about $51, but the share price has moved to a new low. Uh, not a long-term low. Uh, last time it was this low was back in June, July of last year, but it does look a little bit more bearish than it has been for quite a while. And so when I look at the daily chart for James Hardy, this would not be a buy. Uh, because of the bearishness in the short term. But when you look at the long-term chart, the weekly chart, I do get a buy signal. So differing um, signals when you look at the different time frames. And I think the best way to play this is you want a buy signal when you look at the weekly chart and also the, the daily chart. Possibly if you look at the monthly chart too and you get a buy signal there as well, that would be ideal. Now to Fisher and Paykel Healthcare, a little bit different than Fisher and Paykel appliances, and that's not even listed on the ASX, but the majority of people, particularly those who are not investors, know Fisher & Paykel as the company that sells electrical appliances like ovens, that sort of thing. I know Fisher & Paykel as the healthcare company. This has been a great um, wealth winner for shareholders over the past decade, and this is the daily chart. So starting with the daily chart, and then I'll look at the weekly chart in the next slide. I did this for some reason. I, can't remember right now, I'm getting old and my memory, uh, particularly my short-term memory can be short at times. But anyway, if we go back to 2020, 2020 this company was not affected by COVID-19 financial panic. You don't see any significant drop in the share price during that period. There was a small little blip, but no particular massive decrease in the share price. But funnily enough, ever since then, the share price of this company has gone sideways. In fact, the high in the share price for Fisher & Paykel was reached in July 2020, at about $35, $35. And the low since then is around $25, we'll say $25.50. And that is actually a good support level. We have seen share price reach that back in March 2021, and it's just reached it recently. So right now, looking at the daily chart, Fisher and Paykel is right on a support level. And this could be a low risk entry point particularly if you are a trader because the share price falls, say, to $25, that's an immediate sell because it's moved through the support level and that support level becomes resistance. But this could be a good time to take a position. Share price has gone sideways for a long period of time. It's consolidated. And if a share price consolidates for a long, long time, eventually share price will break out, particularly if the company keeps on performing. So this could be a low risk uh, buying position right now even if you're in it, this company for the long term. So let's have a look at the weekly chart to see if we get a different signal there. As I mentioned in the previous slide, Fish & Parkle um, has been an absolute wonderful company for shareholders who have been in it for the long term. And this company was in a well-defined uptrend from 2013 all the way through to right now, in fact. I'll still say it's in an uptrend, but we saw two buy the dip opportunities in this nine year period back in 2016 and then again in 2019 when the share price moved towards the 50 week and 100 week moving average and then it moved back in that range uh, back in towards the end of 2020, start of 2021. But the share price has just gone sideways. So it's looking probably the most bearish um, right now than it has, had, has looked 
in the past nine years. And I probably, at this point in time, uh, whether this is a buy, hold or sell is dependent on what you think about the long-term future of this company. And this is when it becomes important when you know a company well or not. If you probably didn't have much conviction about the long term of this company, uh, you might be a little bit, so not fearful, but you might be a little bit wary. If the share, share price falls below that support level, that would be a sell. But uh, because it's right on that support level right now, this could be a good time to take a position, particularly if you think this company has significant promise in the future. Final company I'll look at is Monodelphus. This is um, a mining services company, and back in 2012, 2013, uh, the industry absolutely loved, and when I say industry, I'm talking about financial management, uh, financial fund managers. They absolutely love this company, uh, the best mining service company on the ASX. I still think fund managers would probably call Monodelphus the best mining service company on the ASX. Back in 2012 and 2013, when there was a mining boom going on, uh, these sort of companies saw massive valuation, not ma maybe not massive valuations, but share price got to a high here of about $28 to $30 back in 2012. But mining booms come to an end. And when mining booms come to an end, companies like this will be affected, and they can be affected quite significantly. And that's why the share price of this company fell from about $28 or $29 all the way to a low of about $6 in 2015 and 16. But share price has done okay since then. A very slow moving uptrend, which is shown by that a sloping upwards line. It has reached it about five times, six times in the past. Uh, and in between that period where it did reach it, so it first reached it in 2016, and then it next reached it during the COVID-19 financial panic. In that four year period, share price looked like it was in an uptrend, had turned around. But there has been a shorter term downtrend so you can see another sloping line, downward sloping line. So we have an upward sloping line since 2016, a downward sloping line since 2019, and those two lines are converging. That's when it becomes really exciting. Who's gonna win? The downward pressures on the share price or the longer term upwards pressures on the share price. And recently, when they released the half year results, the market sort of liked those results, and we may have saw a break, saw a breakout to that downward sloping resistance line, which is that shorter term um, downtrend. So let's have a look at the daily chart to see if the share price has broken that resistance. And so here we have zoomed in, this is looking at the daily chart, zoomed in to the daily chart, looking at the past about almost two years, and we have that downward sloping resistance line, the upward sloping support line, where the share price hits that resistance line, share price pulls back. Anytime share price hits that support line, the share price takes off again. So you might buy when the share price hits the support and then sell when the share price hits that uh, resistance level. And if you did that, you could have bought uh, Monodelphus back in August at about $8 and, or $8 and then sold it a few months later at $15. Or almost double your money in a very short period of time if you play these trends. And you can see those two trends are converging. So this is like a wedge. Uh, that's the best way to say it. And what I'm waiting for here in these sort of wedges is a breakout to the upside or a breakout to the downside. And when Monodelphus released their half year results, uh, this little bit of a short term downtrend that we have seen since uh, March last year, so almost a one year downtrend. And the reason I call that a downtrend and is because the moving averages are going down and the shorter term moving average is uh, below the shorter, the longer term moving average. And the other thing is we've seen higher, lower highs and lower lows consistently over the past year. And that setup was broken when the company released their half year results. And that's the sort of thing I am looking for in a breakout with the share price. I wanna see a breakout, a positive breakout to the share price, coinciding with good financial news. That is the most powerful sort of breakout you can have. And during that breakout or potential breakout with Monodelphus, the share price moved from about $9 all the way to a high of $12. That's a nice 33% gain in a very short period of time. And people say technical analysis doesn't work. And what happened as soon as the share price hit that resistance level, that downward sloping line, share price pulled back. 
So it moved below that, re that resistance line. It poked above it for a very short period of time, but that's when selling came in. So again, self-fulfilling prophecy. People saw the share price hit that, uh, that resistance line, it decided to sell, decided to take some profits. So I was getting a little bit excited when I saw the share price uh, get above that resistance level, but my excitement didn't last very long. I really want to wait for confirmation before I take a position when there is a potential breakout like we are seeing with Monotelfus. I do love technical analysis, and that uh, opinion has, or my thoughts have really drastically changed over the past few years. I just love looking at charts right now, love looking at uh, Monodelphus, a company I probably would have never have looked at in the past, or South32, uh, Technology One, I always look at that because I just like the company. Uh, Fisher & Park, well, probably is another company I might look at if I was uh, the sort of value investor like uh, Buffett and Munger. And what's the other company we look at? Oh, Sigma Pharmaceuticals. More than likely, would never have looked at that company otherwise. And I just like the fact that I get to look at every single company on the ASX. Well, maybe not every single company because I typically will ignore a lot of the small caps, a lot of the, the exploring mining companies because a lot of those companies, we need to see a share price rip up or break out. It's based off FOMO and hype. And I want to try to stay away from those sort of breakouts because a lot of times, uh, just too much hype, too much FOMO, and you can't, I find it really hard to understand the psychology behind those sort of things. When you talk about the medium to long-term psychology factors or influences on the share price, particularly on the larger companies, that's when I think I have an advantage. And I have shown that over the last few years. I have seen some really good performance uh, with those companies that I bought using this sort of strategy. So if you have any questions about this strategy or anything else I do, just leave a comment in the, or question in the comment section of this video. Otherwise, I'm not a financial advisor. If you do need financial advice, make sure you seek out someone who is qualified and can speak to your own financial needs. That's it for this video. Have a good day. Bye.